Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for this week's What's in My Shop. And I had a pretty productive weekend, so I actually have a fair bit to show. Um, I do have a lot of Victorian desktop done. I got a lot of work done on that. As you can see, I kind of have it pretty much all assembled. And if we turn it around here, I ended up taking that piece that I showed last week and cutting it out and then using my number 46 to cut rabbits all the way around on the inside so that it's only about a quarter of an inch thick. And then I cut out a hole in the side panel and then I glued this piece in. So if I open it up, you can see that this piece is recessed in and then there's a hole for the power supply which has a fan right there. So this will cover up where the fan is and that will provide good airflow to the power supply. Um, I don't think it really needs that much airflow. It's not that powerful of a system so it shouldn't have that big of a power draw. But you know, I figured one, it looks kind of cool. I like it because otherwise I felt like this panel was just kind of boring. It was just flat. A lot of wasted space and I mean there still is a lot of empty space to it but having that just kind of I think gives it a little bit more substance to to kind of tie it into the rest of the case especially since that matches the front um let's see if I can as you can see this side panel has kind of the the same pattern just flipped and that pattern comes from these kind of pieces in here. So there's six pieces in here and I basically just laid this down face down on the piece of mahogany and then traced this out and then flipped it over and then traced it again and I just didn't really want all the stuff in the middle and I just kind of thought that that was a better size than having like you know all of that on the side panel so that's kind of where that comes from and that's why it matches and I'm fairly happy with it. I mean, I wasn't originally intending to do that. I was originally intending to just kind of cut that in the side panel, but I'm kind of glad that I chose not to just because I kind of like having the extra little bump on the side. It just kind of helps make it a little bit more interesting so it's not so flat, a little bit more dimension since there's a lot of texture along the case otherwise you know with these being bumped out that being bumped out and all that kind of fun but yeah before we take a look at the inside of the case i'm just gonna take a random tangent here and if we take a look over out the window and let's see this past weekend it was in the 70s and today it's snowing <laughs> oh, Minnesota. Gotta love it. Anyway, back to what I was going to show. The inside of the case, you can kind of see, I have a lot of the water cooling stuff laid out, and I have the system pretty much installed. And I did that so that I could kind of get an idea for where parts are going, and it got a little tighter than I was expecting, I guess. Trying to mount the reservoir straight vertical um, didn't quite work out because the power supply cables start getting in the way or I can't get to the fill port, which is up on top. So for right now, I kind of have this in there and I think that might be what I end up going with. I have an angled fitting up here so I can still get to the fill port and then this will be eventually replaced with a fitting there and a fitting here and then just a piece of tubing in between it. I just have these extensions so that I can have it kind of showing where I want it and get an idea of where I want it to be. But I'll eventually use these brackets to mount it to these two pieces, but I might have to make a little piece that goes behind it that it mounts to and then that mounts to these uprights. So that'll be one more little tweak that I have. But the 200 millimeter radiator up front fits pretty well. I mean, obviously I kind of planned that out, but I have the pump connected directly to that. So it'll come out the other side, go into the water blocks and then come back into the reservoir. But just to give you an idea of the space or almost lack of, 
for, uh, there we go, we'll go this way. The fan, basically, that's about how much room there is inside, and that's what I've got to work with. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll probably be taking the, the tube to come back. We'll probably come through this section up here because there's a little bit more space. And then I'll have most likely a fitting that'll angle out here so that that tubing can, can come around to the inside and go back in that way. But yeah, I'm getting kind of excited. I'm glad that this is starting to get there. Um, so let's see if we go around back. The back side of the case now has a back. <laughs> now, the last time it was kind of in progress, but I got this frame done, the outside frame done, and then I cut the aluminum piece. This is aluminum, and then the aluminum grate is actually glued in. And so I cut out the section for this I.O. for the motherboard here. And then I put that in, laid it out, and then marked out where these holes had to be for the graphics card. And this is what I was kind of trying to describe before. These little standoffs go into the graphics card, and then when you plug in the DVI cable or the VGA cable, there's two little screws that you can put in that secure it into those. And so that's actually also what's holding the graphics card in. And so that's, I mean, that's in there pretty good. So that I am actually pretty happy with because it keeps it clean and it was actually pretty easy. I just used my jeweler saw or a fret saw to cut those out and then use a file to clean them up. And then I have the power supply down here and obviously the venting there. And then after that was all done, I marked out for this center post and did the mortise and tenon joinery for that. And that's kind of because I didn't want to just put it in the middle. I'm not sure if this is actually in the middle or not. It might be. So two and seven eighths. And okay, so it's barely off of center. But what I was going for was just to make sure that I didn't run into this IO here. And that was why I didn't mount that before I finished the back panel. So that I am pretty happy with. And let's see. So then up here on the top, I decided to put the power switch. I let my wife pick out the power button and I had a bunch to choose from. For some reason I have like 12 different power buttons and she liked the lighted one with the power emblem. But anyway, I also chopped two mortises all the way through and then I had to also chop another kind of recess around the mortise on the inside to get these USB 3.0 cables mounted. So it'll actually have two USB ports and the power button will be up top. And all I have to do for that to be done is I just have to take the power button back out and then I have to solder on some wires so that I can connect it to the motherboard so it'll actually work. And then that should be ready to go. And I also got the hardware mounted. I drilled out and screwed these four brackets in place. I'll be painting the screws on those so they're not silver. And then obviously before I install it for the final time, I'll take the paper off of the, off of the window so that you can actually see in. So let me get rid of this. And as if you didn't think that was enough to get done over the weekend, I also have three new bench planes. Well, not really new. Uh, this one I think I've had for you, probably close to two years now, maybe a little bit more. And then this one I've had for about six months and I haven't done anything with. And this one I've had for about a year and a half. And I finally got around to kind of cleaning them up. Well, they were mostly clean, I guess. This one was probably about halfway there. But then I kind of cleaned up the iron. I got that finely sharpened so that I can actually use it. And I have made shavings with it. Let me see if we have a scrap here. So I did actually get it working. I still have a little bit more that I want to get done to it. The bottom isn't quite flat. There we go. Haha, -ha, shavings. And this past weekend was the first time that this one has actually made shavings since I've had it. 
And like I said, I still kind of need to flatten the bottom and maybe clean up the sides a little bit more. There's kind of some pitting on the bottom. I'm not sure I'm gonna go too crazy with that, but yeah, it could use a refinish on the handles, but I kind of like it the way it is just because it kind of shows the patina. But this one, I also have to flatten the bottom, but that'll be pretty easy because it's a corrugated plane and I found that those go pretty easy. And so I got this one, I got the iron all cleaned up, polished up, and I had to glue the tote back together. Somebody used a really high gloss finish on it too. I'm not the biggest fan of that, but it looks okay, I guess, if it has to. <laughs> but anyway, so I used just some glue to put the tote back together. There's a crack right through here. And then I got that iron sharpened up. And then this one's also back in order. I have a pretty decent collection of type 11s and almost all of them are corrugated. I, I have three, so this one all the way through number eight, including four and a half and five and a half in uh, type 11s. And the only one that isn't corrugated I have is a number four. And I also have another number three because I kind of found that I like having a number three without a corrugated bottom, just because I like to use it for bevels a lot. Or if I'm doing, like if I was gonna round this over, I'd probably go grab the non-corrugated one, just because anytime you're planing on a corner, sometimes the corrugations just sort of get in the way because now it wants to sit right there. And if I'm trying to skew the iron and I happen to catch it, it just, I like it more this way. Anyway, so this one I also got working again. First time that it was making shavings this weekend was was kind of fun. And then the last one is this plane, which is, it's a Fulton, well stamped the Fulton 13. So it's a 13 inches long, it's a jack plane, and it has been well used. Um, as you can see, there's a, a kind of a new plate in here that somebody at one point kind of cut away and then doweled in to close the mouth again. And that's because if you see on the inside, there's where that new mouth comes in, is way up here. And so the mouth would have been that wide open, which wouldn't necessarily have been a bad thing because it is a jack plane. So it's not like you're gonna be going for the, you know, really thin shavings or anything like that. I mean, it's a rough tool. So um, it's, it wasn't entirely necessary that they put that in there, but it definitely doesn't hurt anything either. And so this one, I cleaned up the iron and got it sharpened and man, that's the first time I've actually had to like redo an iron on one of these bench planes. And it's a tapered iron. It's a tapered iron so it goes from thick on the actual working side to thin on the other side. And I found that most of this actually is not all that hard, but there's a definite line in there that you can kind of see. It runs right through about here. And that's where the steel actually gets pretty hard. So that was kind of a pain. It was this, I have, well, one, I have a hand crank grinder, so that doesn't help either. But everything in here wasn't too bad, but then it was kind of gumming up the, wheel on my grinder a lot, so I had to, you know, go in and dress every so often. But then I hit the other stuff, and it actually went pretty well, but it's pretty hard. And the back was pretty, pretty out of flat, so that took, oh boy, probably an hour and a half or so just to get the iron ready to go. And that doesn't even include polishing it up and getting it cleaned up and all that kind of stuff. So that was quite the task. And then on the body here, I just took some paste wax and a scotch Brite pad and applied paste wax with the scotch Brite pad because with these, I really don't want to refinish them because I really like the color and the patina that these things get, but I just kind of wanted to clean it up and then get a little bit more kind of moisture, well not quite moisture, but basically get the wood so it wasn't quite so dry and then cleaning off the end and that kind of stuff was, was just kind of nice because it looks it looks better, but it doesn't look new. So that's kind of what I like about that one. And this one actually matches, the reason I bought this one was because it matches a jointer plane, a Fulton 22, 
I think, the Fulton 22, 22 or 23 or 20. Anyway, it's a jointer plane, and that one I actually got from my grandfather, and we're not entirely sure where it came from, but we think it came from one of his relatives is where he got it. So there's a little bit of sentimental value there, but I, I got this one because it's the same brand, and I really don't, haven't seen that many Fultons. I think they were a Sears brand at one point, but anyway, it's a Sandusky iron, and I finally got this thing making shavings after probably two-ish hours of, of rehab work. And that was fun. <laughs> I took this piece of pine and just kind of went to town and made a lot of shavings. And it started out as three quarters of an inch thick. And now it's down just under an eighth of an inch. So yeah, if you ever want to make your shop smell pretty good, that worked. <laughs> but yeah, so that was basically my weekend. I, Got quite a bit done, and this past week also, I, I got some other work done on kind of working on some vents for the other computer case mod that I was working on with some mods you staff. And ran into a couple of hiccups there. The bending brake that I have doesn't work the greatest for that uh, 22 gauge steel, or 20 gauge steel, 22 gauge steel, and it's kind of a pain, so. I don't really know what I'm going to do about that. We might make it out of aluminum and epoxy it instead of making it out of steel and weld, uh, just because it might end up being a lot easier. And then the other problem is that it's too big for what we're trying to bend, by bending brake that is, is too wide to try and do what we're trying to do, which means that I'm either going to have to make it in three pieces or figure something else out. So that could be fun. But other than that, I think that pretty much wraps up this week's What's in My Shop. So as always, thanks for watching and I do appreciate the comments. So till then, catch you later.